Just because there are things I don't remember doesn't make my actions meaningless. The world doesn't just disappear when you close your eyes, does it? Hi everyone, welcome to Priority Holder, and today we'll be playing Mardu Mentor in the Timeless format. The Monastery Mentor is just an awesome card. It, it, it itself has prowess, and when you cast it on creature spell, it creates 1-1 one, one monk tokens with prowess. So it famously got restricted in vintage for, due to power level. It just plays really good with zero cost spells since you can make an army and overwhelm them quite quickly. So the only zero cost spells we have are Mishra's Bobble, but it's really strong in this deck. And just, we have a suite of like a bunch of amazing one mana spells. Swords, Thoughtseize, Unearth to bring back Mentor and everything else, and Lightning Bolt. So it just works really well. Another one that sort of synergizes with this package is Dreadhorde Arcanist, another famously powerful card. That when it attacks, it can basically flash back something without paying its mana cost equal to its power, which hits all of our high impact spells right here. So this plays really well with it. Powerhouse Orcish Bowmasters, of course. Um, Dragon's Rage Channeler, which triggers off all these non creature spells and is a threat in and of itself. And also Bone Crusher Giant, card with its own good pedigree. Its Stomp Adventure can cut through ring protection, and it's just a hefty threat on its own. Not to mention Stomp triggering uh, Monastery Mentor and Dragon's Rage Channeler. So we're going to see if we can grind some people out and jump into some games. This hand looks pretty nice. Um, Little light on threats, but we can keep bringing back the Bowmaster should it get removed. That That's pretty appealing. This could be a painful first turn, but we're going to fetch Shock Thoughtseize just to see if we can disrupt them. And it looks like we're playing Mono Black. They have a pretty good hand. Um, worried about Bowmasters and Karn. So decide to take the Bowmasters. Bo Bolt can help deal with Karn, and we really don't want our Bowmasters getting sniped. Though maybe with two unnerves we were okay with that, so it's hard to say. Oh, another thought sees. Yeah, so with that, now, now we can grab the Karn. Unless they get something better, we'll have to see. Alright, this opponent cracks their bobble. And that's a little unfortunate. I mean, that's going to put our unearths to the test with two removal spells in hand. So our our bowmasters is going to be under assault. Uh oh, they must have drawn something good. Wow. Okay. So we got thought seized bugged this time. Opponent drew a new Karn, the Great Creator, and a Dark Ritual off their bobble. So let's see what they grab. Grab a one ring. All right, that makes sense. That's pretty dang strong. Karn's at three loyalty though, so we're gonna go ahead and shock in uh, Sacred Foundry, take it down with the lightning bolt. Unfortunately, down to ten already. So like we are getting close to dying to like a gray merchant. Should they be able to muster any devotion? But they haven't been able to to get the devotion train going. Now it's always tricky playing Mishra's Bobbles um, against black decks. I go ahead and crack it now just to play around like a, a Bowmasters, but that does play into like discard spells, like should they draw like a Thought Seize, like, so there's always a tension and you just, you have to sort of weigh the different downsides, but we're gonna run out Bowmasters and of course they use a removal spell. We're okay with that with two copies of Unearth though. Okay, so. Swamp's not bad. That's gonna allow us to. All right, we're gonna attack in. And with with mana being constrained the way it is, like usually you want to stomp then bow crusher, but considering how costly it is for them to like get rid of bone crusher, I figured to just play it out there. Another thing to consider is that Bone Crusher's Stomp can shut down Ring Protection, so that's another reason to hold on to it. But like I said, our mana is just co so constrained. So, opponent has Ring Protection, and you know, I'm I'm not so certain I did the last turn that great. But anyway, here we are. I'm gonna bring Bowmasters. I'm gonna ping Bone Crusher. We won't get damaged by it because it's not a, a spell targeting it. Now this this was recorded before MKM, so we don't have any of the surveil lands to get for value. Not only that, but we probably want to pull Gigantic to hand anyway there. So, all right. 
This opponent can gain a decent chunk of life off the march. We're just gonna see how much damage we can do. Alright. They drew a Bowmasters, which is an excellent draw for them. Now Normally Bowmasters is like pretty dang good against ring activations, but the opponent's been able to just sort of basically shut down our Bowmasters at all points so that they can just have free ring access. So we're gonna play Monastery Mentor here. And gonna go ahead and bring back a Bowmasters just to get that first mentor trigger. And so we're just trying to present them with like overload them with, with threats. So they decide to take down Mentor, and they're going to activate Ring before Bowmasters hits the battlefield. We're going to take down their creature. So, and that was honestly a pretty great turn. Like, we have a ton of power on the board, so... Let's see what the opponent can muster up to deal with this. Alright, that's actually... I mean, this is just the power of Orcish Bowmasters right here. So they're going to attack Anuma up a new Bowmasters. And it gets worse than that, because they grabbed a Bowmasters... And based on the fact they're using Dark Ritual... Oh, they're activating it first. Alright, Shield proceeding. Alright, I thought it was going to be Double Bowmaster, so... That was not great, and they're able to choose the non-token creature mode to make sure Bone Crusher died, so... No blocks, I was very surprised about that, but I guess they were worried about, like, being blown out by, like, the monk's prowess. But the rings starting to chew up their life total... Alright, so they're up to four counters on it. Alright, Bobble. Fatal Push takes down our Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ashiok. So now they're actually building up Devotion. Like, it's it's not certain their Devotion deck, but usually when you see Ashiok, that's that's an indication of Devotion strategy. Now this, this is going to sort of nerf all of our unearths for the rest of the game, the fact that Ashiok nuked our graveyard. Fortunately, they have cycling, but that's just one thing that's already happened. Now, we don't have enough to Bone Crusher and... or Stomp and Bone Crusher. Now, we're just going to attack right here, and the opponent has found another Bowmasters. Now, let's see what they target. And so, this, I think, was a mistake by them. Well, they, I guess they're just going for upside. They knew we had Stomp, so what we're going to do... We could shoot one of their creatures. The army's probably the worst thing to shoot because they'll get a new one off the Bowmaster trigger on the stack. But playing Stomp allows us to get a Prowess trigger and allows the Monk to survive. And went ahead and just went right at their life total because we you see the ring is up to four counters right now. So this is forcing them into a bunch of uncomfortable blocks because I'm sure they'd love to just have Bowmasters in play. But opponent falls to one here. All right, activates the ring. Let's see if they've found anything. All right, here comes Ashiok. Getting some good stuff, unfortunately. All right, so opponent's able to ditch the mirror. Oh, sorry, ditch the ring. All right, they're going to put a card in the Great Creator into play. And, yeah, I'm checking my graveyard because they're at one. We have bolts, we have bone crushers, we have bow masters. So I'm trying to get an idea of how many live hits we have. Alright, opponent has another ring. So this seems like they've opted to put all their rings into the sideboard instead of the main deck and just use Karns to pull them out. So that's that's different than some things I've seen. So, so we have drawn something. Now here's the question though. If we've already seen March of Otherworldly Light, you could see me set the upkeep to stop, but then undo it. I'm, I'm really agonizing over it right now because if they have March of, sorry, March of Wretched Sorrow, the black one, they could gain a ton of life if we present them with the target, and then they won't die to the Bowmaster's trigger. So that is why I did not fire it off on their upkeep. Um, what I would love to do is find a bolt or a bone crusher or even a or even a swords because then we could fizzle a march spell so all right so opponent plays a new ring gets a new ring protection round so i'm i'm, tr I'm trying to be patient here because it feels like we have them like under the ropes right now all right so opponent is, but the problem is is like as we could see they can activate Karn on the ring, and so to be able to kill us 
pretty soon just by attacking with the ring. And the, the opponent has to be suspicious since we're not casting Bone Crusher. There, there is a, we could have possibly bolted in that land, or sorry, shocked in the land, play Bone Crusher, have Bowmasters up. But I, I'm just really hoping for any, any sort of interaction piece or direct damage to like really get past March of Wretched Sorrow. I don't know if it was the correct call, but that that's what I was thinking at the time. So, but as as it stands, we're just frankly running out of time. Like we can't just like they're gonna kill us really soon. And the problem with waiting is that you give them more chances to actually draw the card you're worried about. So like, it's really tough. It's hard to say. So go ahead and play Bone Crusher. Opponent fires off shoulders. It seems like now is as good a time as any to to go for it. So Bowmasters hits the battlefield, and we're like I'm bracing for March of Wretched Sorrow right here. They've drawn so many cards. We know it's in their deck. And they have a fatal push. And we managed to sneak off with that win. It got close though. And as we move into the next game, please remember to high speed hover bike the like button, comment and subscribe. It supports the channel and helps you know what the people want. Thank you. This hand, once again a little bit threat light, but double thought C should help uh, make sure we can enact our game plan pretty nicely. Turn zero ley line of the void from the opponent. That is rough because we're running unearths, not to mention Dragon's Rage Channelers, so um, Channelers would just be 1-1s one -ones with the Surveilling Upside and Unearth is a complete dead card, except except for the fact that it um, cycles. Um, Meat Hook Massacre, we're not super worried about that. Bowmasters, on the other hand, is just super annoying and very strong, so... Not to mention we have Thoughtseize Backup. And, yeah, it seems like Karn, I mean, we just saw in that last game, Karn fetching rings is like a big problem, so... Black is very popular and timeless. Like you get Dark Ritual, you get Necro, you get you get so many good good things. So, all right. So they're they're just firing off a Meat Hook Massacre for zero, just to build up Devotion. So makes you wonder if they drew they drew like a Nykthos or something like that. We're just gonna fetch a Tap Shock and now here's here's you know you always lo love to get most value possible. But it seems like a great time to just run out a Bone Crusher Giant and just start pressuring them. All right, here comes Ashiok. So this this point is definitely on the devotion plan. The other ones seemed like they were. So they got the graveyard covered two different ways. Um, I'm a little scared about how much devotion they have. Like a Grey Merchant would be really rough, so it just, since we can kill it with one attack, decide just to take down Ashiok, but that is giving the opponent an extra turn, so it's not it's not an ironclad play, so and here's new Ashiok. Now, let's see, okay, so they do activate it, so... Now, here's the... so with two bolts in hand and two bone crushers it seems like at this point we could ignore the ashok we know they have no other cards in hand and we can we can take them down pretty quickly all right so here's necropotence now they have to be careful because they're facing they're facing eight power on the board they don't know we have six points of burnt but yeah the opponent just packs it in so they they knew so at most they could necro for like I guess they could go all out Necro for a bunch of cards, but they can't go below three because then targeting a Bone Crusher with March would kill. Anyway, it was a pretty dire spot and the opponent just packed it in. But we'll happily take that and move on to this next game. A little more threat dense, and we have a Dragon, or sorry, Dreadhorde Arcanist in hand, which we'll be happy about. Very strong Soul Tie hand from the opponent. Two counter spells, Oko and Bowmasters. Oko seems to be the most problematic this deck because it just gets such massive loyalty. Now firing off Mishra's Bobble here, I think I made a mistake. I think it would have been better to, to do that on my turn, to draw it on their, basically deny them Bowmaster's value. But the opponent decides not to flash, they're probably just holding up a counter spell, just 
in case we have something nastier. Something nasty coming down. So we'll play Mishra's Bobble. We're gonna bobble them. Our hand's developing pretty nicely. All right, Uro is coming very soon. Now, we we know we're, we just have to get, eat through their counter spells. Like, we know our first couple threats are going to get countered, so we're just going to have to deal with it. So put a Dreadhorde Arcanist on the stack, and this is going to prompt them to do something. All right, and there's a counter spell. All right. And the opponent, once again, opts to just let us draw without crushing us with Bowmasters. Now, Thoughtseize is an amazing draw here. That's going to allow us to sort of force the issue with Counterspell. All right, so they play Bowmasters. Let's see what they have. Now, we fall to 11. All right, so they just have a land in hand. Now this is going to be painful because if we fetch shock, we're going to fall to six, but the opponent has just nothing going on. Oh, I guess, yeah, we don't need to shock because we have a basic, so. I'm going to go ahead and stomp the Bowmasters. And now, the opponent needs something fast. Because even though there's a big life total disparity, like, we have, a, you know, tons of action right now. And yeah, they pack it in. They must they must have just drawn another land right there and and saw the writing on the wall. So um doing pretty good with this mid-range deck. Alright, turn one brainstorm from the opponent. Alright, they put the cards back. Life's good when you draw this many thought seizes, so we're just gonna hammer them with the th turn one thought seize. Oh wait, so they only have one threat, and it seems like Good to take Dragon's Rage Channeler and just leave them with a bunch of interaction. That way they can't like protect it with Spell Pierce or something like that and then start running away with the game getting Surveil value. It's better just to... Even though we have like a lot of removal in this deck, better to uh, make... We want to prolong the game in this matchup. Now we're, we're throwing off... You know, throwing out a Dread, Dreadhorde Arcanist. We 100% knew it was going to eat a lightning bolt, but we just got to chew through the removal somehow. Not to mention we have an extra dread horde, so. Alright, so we just pass here. I was holding up stomp in case they played like a ragavan or, or something. Honestly, maybe we should just play dread horde last turn. I was trying to maybe bait them into using a Spell Pierce with that Stomp activation. Opponent didn't do it though. So we're gonna bobble them. Dragon's Rage Channel, all right. So we'll have to deal with that at some point. All right, so Thought Seize is gonna eat the Spell Pierce, which we knew that was gonna happen. So we're, we're, we're really uh, land light this game. Still missing on lands. But it means we have tons of action, though. And the spell pierce has been taken care of, so... We're gonna go ahead and bolt the Dragon's Rage channel end of turn. Another bolt. Um, so we could just play a Dreadhorde Arcanist, or we could try and unearth... A one in the graveyard and leave up Lightning Bolt. Decide just to play... Play a secondary one, and we know that they have. Okay, so the point I had a lightning bolt. We knew about the unholy heat at the very least. All right, here comes Ragavan. This is unfortunate because they're gonna get a treasure, and hopefully not something super good off our deck. All right, yeah, it was just a land. Fortunately for us, but opponent has unholy heat, Ragavan. And yeah, our hand, we're still just not drawing lands, though we are drawing good stuff though. So this unearth. Is gonna get us, uh, well, would have gotten us a Dreadhorde Arcanist, except it got memory lapsed. And this is the, the, the dangerous part, though, is that, you know, Ragavan can attempt to steal the Unearth right here. 
because it's on the top of our library and that means they can bring back a Dragon's Rage Channeler. So we're really hoping they don't have a counter spell right here. So we put the lightning bolt in the stack. And they do have another counter spell. Though that is going to put the bolt on top so they won't be stealing on Earth. That is rough though because they're going to be able to just bolt us down to eight. Ragavan goes back to hand. So we're happy they didn't get a Dragon Rage Channeler off like one of our Unearths right there. Now the basic mountain is haunting us because if it was also uh, if, let's say it was a sacred foundry then we'd also have swords to plowshares up right now and be feeling a lot safer. Alright so a, a non-delirium unholy heat and the opponent's going to dash Ragavan. Yeah, we'll happily make this trade right here. We do not want them getting any Ragavan value. And the opponent's running out of resources. All right, and the last card's Delver. And we finally draw another land. We're definitely going to use all of our mana this turn. So trying to think about what to do. Decide best course of actions prior to unearth a Dreadhorde Arcanist. And then stomp down Delver. Just not even mess around with that. Just take care of it and let's see what they can do. All right, opponent draws Bobble. They go and Bobble us. Now that we finally got a Dreadhorde Arcanist to stick and that's really bad for them. So, unless they got a removal spell right here, but it looks like they don't. It seems like the, the best course of action is to unearth the other Dreadhorde Arcanist. That way we can just keep the train going of casting all these spells from our graveyard. There was like an argument for, for thought seizing right there, but I think getting another threat on the board, especially when we have like stomp plus swords backup. Yeah, Delver is not long for this world. They already knew we had stomp, but you know, they have to they have to do the best they can, but it's looking like we're firmly in the driver's seat and yeah, they go and pack it in. So that was a nice win against like blue red tempo so all right land ragavan from the opponent and the nice thing about this deck is we're packing a ton of removal we got four bolts four pushes four swords so very good at dealing with the like creature dense strategies okay so opponent dashes a ragavan on turn two once again we're hoping they don't hit anything super good that's actually pretty good. Uh, they hit a Thought Seize, which they cast immediately. And surprised to see them take Mentor. I would have thought they would have taken uh, Bowmasters. So. The question is uh, what to play. There, there's a lot of different directions you can go this turn. Like, you can just hold up Bowmasters. Decide to play Dragon's Rage Channeler and unearth a Monastery Mentor. Gets us a Surveil Trigger. It does undo the Delirium for Dragon's Rage Channeler, but it puts a Mentor into play, which they were obviously uh, worried about or else they wouldn't have thought seized it. So it seemed good to get that in play. All right, Lightning Strike takes it down. Turns Channeler back into a 3-3, but it eats a Lightning Bolt. And we're happy, against like mono red aggro, we're happy to see the game being prolonged like this. Like they don't have any threats on board. We're gonna go ahead and unearth. Now the question is, do we take Monastery Mentor or Dragon's Rage Channeler? I go ahead and opt for Channeler here because we don't, if we had a non-creature to follow up with a Monastery Mentor, we might've taken that, but Dragon's Rage Channeler cleanly blocks a Ragavan. So that's why I wanted that in play. All right, so opponent has all the aggro red creatures. Gonna go ahead and fire off Bone Bowmasters, just take down Bowmat Courier. And it seems like we're we're already in the driver's seat in this game. Chandler is gonna have to attack, but we still have like Gigantha waiting in the wings. And if we do, you know any non-creatures are gonna start going off with Monastery Mentor. Opponent dashes in Ragavan. And this this just feels like a desperation. Like this is just not a great attack. You know, like they have 
Maybe they should have bluffed with the mountain. I would have been a little more scared, but with full information there, we knew we were in no danger, and yeah, opponent packs it in. Well, that was surprising just to sweep all those games 5-0, and yeah, this deck has a lot of resiliency and a lot to like. I really enjoy how Unearth just keeps the threats flowing and makes it real difficult for the opponent to get rid of our stuff like Bowmasters we like keeping around, and everything just sort of synergizes really well. Dreadhorde Arcanist can flash all this stuff back, Monastery Mentor can help us go wide. Just a lot of good things going on, and like just hammering opponents with thought seizes can just really bias the time to just sort of break their spirit and just land a few threats. So I really like what this deck has going on. I was very surprised at how well it went. Now this was recorded before MKM, so I'd pr if you're building it now, I'd put in a, at least one or two of the surveil lands just to get some value. It wouldn't go too heavy, but put a couple of them in there to get some value. But yeah, um, this is a super fun strategy. I highly recommend it. You know me, I mostly play like hyper aggro or combo deck so like it, I'm not not usually playing mid-range but this kind of powerful and fun and interactive deck it's gonna make me want to play more mid-range so but yeah let me know in the comments that what's your favorite one mana spell um, anyways thank you for watching hope you have a wonderful day